Hi class again. Um, in this record lecture, I'm going to talk about some new example. Before I get to the new example, I would like to remind you that this lecture actually will be substituting on for the lectures uh, 30. Uh, last lecture actually, the one that you watched before was uh, uh, the start of the new application and where I talk about uh, resistor, uh, inductor, and capacitor, how it represented in Davenant and Northern equivalent circuit, and uh, please spend your time to uh, carefully uh, go through this uh, lecture uh, notes uh, t for this lectures. And I wanted you to make sure that you have uh, understand all the example and material. And then, if you don't understand it, uh, get your question ready uh, coming on the Sunday tutorial section. Uh, on uh, next week, uh, Monday. Well, I'm going to uh, finalize this chapter. So this is a, you may think that this is a very long chapter. It is not. It's actually the techniques, the method that you learn from Laplace apply to the circuit. So it's actually the application. So so long as you understand and know how to use the, 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 the calculator that you have, putting its all these uh, transfer functions and be able to do the substitution, do the pro uh, partial fractions, expansion, solve that problem, and then convert back by going to the inverse transform. Um, th that's it for this chapter. I mean, it's nothing really super new here. Um, I'm going to talk uh, more on uh, next Wednesday up for the exam review, and then hopefully we'll get yourself ready for the next week, next Friday exam too. So as per what we agree on Monday, that you're going to submit all the homework assigned for these two uh, recorded lectures uh, on uh, Friday 5 p.m. and you can either uh, submit that earlier or uh, by 5 p.m. and it will be on uh, ERC 74 mailbox number 5 and make sure that you submit it on time because uh, the grader is going to pick up all the homework by 5 and then anything later than that will not be accepted. On Monday during the class, I think uh, I wasn't able to show you all the uh, class note on Monday, and um, this is the only page I left off. And would like to just give you a summary about the four useful transfer pair that you can see here. So pair one, pair two, pair three, and pair number four. So this is a pretty straightforward info distinct real that k times e to the power minus a t is actually the constant here divided by s plus t a. This can be found from table 13.1. The same thing for repeated uh, real with uh, k times t times e to the power minus a t, which uh, in the frequency domain form will be equal to k plus e divided by s plus a to the power of two. So this two uh, pair one pair two. <coughs> is not something you have never seen before. It's actually on table 13.1. Uh, I also mentioned about the org uh, organization for the complex, distinct complex uh, roots, is that you have, whenever you see anything like that, k uh, s equal to k uh, divided by s plus alpha minus z uh, beta plus k conjugate divided by s plus uh, alpha minus j beta, you can write this in this form as a uh, as a functions of uh, time domain which is equal to 2 times k times e to the power minus alpha times t so that the alpha here is actually the real number for the root and then cosine uh, with the beta times t so b is actually coming from the absolute number of the uh, imagined part of the root and plus theta of course is the theta of this entire root um, that's a different theta, and then uh, as you may recall, the two is actually from the denominators of the Euler form of the cosine. So if you move that two uh, Euler form to the left hand side, that's the two here. It's not the two of the k here. Just to be clear. And uh, similarly, for repeated complex, um, for example, f s equal to k over s plus alpha minus j beta to the power two plus conjugate of it, 
you can write it similarly except with the addition of a T which is highlighted in red color here so so this is a pretty handy uh, way that uh, if you want to make the uh, exam uh, crib sheet this is something you want to write down on that two page so that you can prepare for the exam uh, that you don't have to memorize anything uh, in your mind so uh, during my last recording recorded uh, class section uh, I have give you a, a an example for um, question 14.5 and I ask you to work on I believe it's a uh, 14.4 let me double check that um, yes so this is a homework that you will be uh, some some meaning on by five uh, uh, on Friday and for the lecture today I'm going to go through the similar example for this application of Laplace transform, hopefully it will get you more intuition in terms of how you're going to solve a circuit problem um, based on um, based on the Laplace techniques method. Now I am going to talk about question um, 14.2 as an example. So 14.2 is actually a very strange circuit. You see that as a combination of resistors, inductor, and a capacitor. So it looks something like this, um, with a node A, capital A, node capital B prime, and then between A and B node, there's a capacitor connect in between. So that would be A, B, and with the one farad of the capacitors and um, so you have a b b a prime b prime so for the a prime node it is going to connect with uh, directly to the b prime so i'm go go going through this uh, crossing is because they are not quite electrically connected uh, uh, between um, a and b prime as well so it's actually only a direct connection from a prime to b and then the last element will be a an inductor so you have the inductor here connect in between uh, a prime and b prime so the value of the inductor will be 2h and uh, the one element I forget to include here which is a capacity uh, the resistor so this is a resistor between a prime and b and same thing as a, a to b prime they both have a u unique different values one is 1 ohm and the other one is 2 ohms so, oh, as always, you have to understand what the question are. So for part A, <coughs> uh, it say when the terminal B, B prime are open circuits. So um, terminal B to B prime are open is open circuit. So B is this node and then B prime open circuit. To find out the uh, Z as as the input equivalent, so which means that you are actually seeing it from this direction. So that's a Z S and you know, if you were, if you are imaginative enough, you can actually redraw this diagram as this uh, equivalent of one um, connected with a capacitor and then a resistor in parallel with a one ohm resistor and then an inductor. So that's the uh, layout should look like, and then this is a one over S because you have one fern on this uh, S L S C. So one time S will be uh, S one over S, and this will be two ohm, one ohm, and uh, two S. 
Um, sometimes it may be difficult for you to imagine uh, how this would look like. So the best way to do this now is I'm going to label the notes numbering. So this is between uh, capacitors and the two ohms. So this part must be note uh, B and then between 2 and 2S, two 2 and 2S will be um, the A prime. And then between 2 prime and 1 ohms um, would be, uh, where's the 1 ohm? Let's see. So this is gonna be this is gonna be A and this is gonna be B prime. Not sure about that. Let's check um, between uh, the capacitor and one ohm. Capacitor and one ohm. That's uh, A node between uh, the inductors and the two ohms will be this, right? This is a B prime between uh, inductor and two ohm will be this again. So I think this is a uh, right representations of this uh, equivalent circuits. So once you're convinced with that, you're going to write the equivalent circuit of this two uh, parallel um, impedance. So for the first part of it, what you can do is actually um, 1 plus 2s in parallel with uh, 1 over s plus 2 ohm. So for the basic two parallel um, equivalent, the, what you really need to do here is to have this term multiplied by this and divided by the sum of these two. So the zs will be equal to 1 plus 2s times 1 over s plus 2 um, divided by uh, the sum of these two terms, which is 1 plus 2s plus 1 over s plus 2. So if you put this number carefully on uh, on your calculators, so I just input this uh, number into my calc uh, the TI-89 calculator and it gave me the result of uh, 2 multiplied by s plus 1 half and then divided by uh, S plus 1. So that is the uh, solution for the part A. So that's pretty straightforward, right? You have to look at the circuit and do this arrangement and the same t the material that you have learned it before from circuit except that you are dealing with this uh, ratio uh, with, uh, with the variable of uh, S in, in the transfer function. So what about for uh, the question B. So I'm going to create a new page here. Um, so the page two, part B will be, um, I'm going to just a little, a white wasting time, I'm going to copy this and paste it on my new page. So here we go. This is a new page. The part B question would be, what if the terminals B to B uh, prime are short circuits? So part B um, terminal B to B prime uh, short circuit circuit so which means that I can actually use a red color to cut this through um, like that so this is a part that the the view perspective how you look uh, to the circuit remain the same except right now you are actually cutting that through um, to have that perspective so how is that different than compared with the previous uh, topology of the circuit think about this do you have a better way to um, to solve this I think the answer is yes but um, how so what I would do I would look at this part as a parallel circuit at the fat impedance and the, this part as another parallel circuit so um, if you find the equivalent circuit of these two elements as well as the, this two element 
it will become a new um, so it will look like something like this and then this will be the same um, so let's just move this a little bit to the right hand side so that I have more room to write so this will be Z S and this remain as A note and this remain as A prime root. basically what you do is you are uh, combining these two parallel and combining these two parallel circuits so how do I write the equation is again the same thing when you do two parallel um, equivalent uh, impedance um, you will just write as D uh, sub S equal to 1 over S multiplied by 1 divided by uh, 1 over S plus 1 because that's the uh, equivalent plus um, 2 2 multiplied by 2 times S divided by 2 plus 2 times S so I mean this will be a little bit uh, more work in the past where we don't have the fancy calculator but it's not true anymore uh, the $150 calculator that you invested will be the best time for you to simplify this easier what you what will take you is basically you need to be able to uh, uh, key in those uh, variable into the calculator and the calculator will basically uh, simplify, simplify it for you so let's start with this uh, uh, and see what the calculator will give you I'm going to punch in this number now to my calculator so I just did and the calculator gave me 1 um, over x plus 1 similarly I'm going to do this uh, for the, the second term plus 2 times 2 x over 2 plus 2 x uh, again that x may indicate the variable I use it on my calculator and after I key in this second term the what I get is 2 time s over maybe this is ugly so we we'll redraw that a little bit um, s plus 1 and if you um, do this again for the this two term term 1 and term 2 on your calculator I believe you can just carry forward from the first one and the second one um, plus this I think my uh, solution to that would be um, 2 times x plus half of it divided by uh, divided by uh, x plus 1 so that's the organized uh, structures of this uh, e equivalent circuit so as you can see that this is the same old stuff that we have uh, learned it before maybe in the beginning of the first circuit but we are actually uh, instead of using the time domain we just using the j omega and be able to organize this in the way that we want to uh, represent in 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 the uh, frequency domain by the way I, I think I put this wrong so this would be s uh, this is a common mistake that, that usually, usually I make um, is this is a s s and s because I use x for the calculator So with the similar step, I think I'm going to assign 14.1 for one of the homework questions for this lecture. So I'm going to write this as, um, where's my, um, so 14.1 as a homework question that you need to submit on Friday. The 14.1 require you a little bit of work, but uh, so long as you know how to uh, systematically co convert series and parallel one by one, I think you will lead to a point that you will get the solution. And I can tell you the, the, the solution just to make sure you want to verify that if your end result will be the same as, uh, let me find a room here. 
um, the solution for the ZS for question 14.1 would be um, 6S plus 8 divided by uh, 6S squared plus 14S plus 11. So, yeah, that's the solution for that question. So, if you look carefully for the homework problem 14.1, from homework 14.1 to uh, the end of the ch chapter, I think basically it's the old stuff. You have a uh, question can be from um, mesh, KCL, KVL to superposition. Again, it's the same thing as we learned before, except we put it in the frequency domain. And then it's a dependent source and uh, dependent current source. I see also um, the uh, source transformation, different technique. I think the author of the book would like to make sure that you experience, it, experience the same thing, but using the frequency uh, domain to solve the circuit. Um, so if you go through this, all, it, all is about the same as we had before. Uh, the only thing is that when you try to solve a circuit problem, in the end you have that transfer function, wherever you want to find it, as a, do the voltage, as all, to find the current of the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> um, of the particular circuit. Um, the only difference is, I see there is a switch open and close for anything uh, from uh, 13, 14.36 uh, to 14.44. Um, so those are the uh, questions that may be different from what we have experienced before. And I am going to talk uh, about one of them. And perhaps you can work on one of the questions for as a homework. So uh, in sum, you will have uh, one more question from uh, from between 13 14.36 to um, 14.44. So after I look through all this possibility, how about you going to work on the, uh, um, an easy question? I'm going to work for a question that is a little bit requires some more work. So you are going to submit the last question that due on Friday, which is 14.36. And then we're going to talk about 14.42 uh, as an example for this lectures. So I'm going to need to create a new page here. Fourteen point four two. So fourteen point four two. Here's the schematic for fourteen point four two. You have a source. Voltage source plus minus of 16 volt, and then a resistor in series with in series with that, and another resistor in parallel, and then uh, a capacitor, and then you have a switch that is close. So I'm going to draw the trees as this and an arrow indicate this uh, and then another end of the switch connected with a resistor and a source plus minus. Resistor only for this uh, branch. So we're going to connect this back here. So that's, this is a 4K ohm. This is a 100 microfarad. And then 12K ohm, 6K ohm. And then the switch will open at the time of T equal to 0. And this voltage source here is 12 volt and uh, 3 kilo ohm for that last resistor and um, our interest point here is to find out the the I, I'm using red color to show you what are the variable we want to find which is the 
i output in terms of time this is what we want to find out so to analyze this problem what you need to do here is to first um, assume that how capacitor will looks like when before uh, time so you have to picture yourself here that you have the time here that's t equal to zero and when time is equal to zero that's the state of the switch change right so it's open this is an open switch open and then um, and then on the other part is that there is a voltage has been charged for a long time so if you has been charged for a long time that means what this capacitor is actually open circuit so we have to draw a an equivalent circuit before t so i'm going to use this um, time here we're going to find draw a schematic before we get to the t here um, maybe i can string this picture a little bit smaller so i get more room uh, maybe a little bit larger here we go so um, I can actually copy here entirely and modify it incrementally slightly for the schematic which is going to save me a lot of time copy and paste so that means I'm going to use blue color to indicate what would be the state change so this I'm going to erase that and this represents the capacitor so I'm going to just use this as a blue st state will react like open circuit during that time so perhaps it's not a bad idea to use blue color consistently right and the switch remain closed so I'm going to just say um, this is closed so technically you have two circuit here separates right this is open so you have the circuit uh, the island here uh, maybe I just draw this so that you can see the big pictures and then you have another circuit right here right basically you have two circuit anyway um, I think you, you get my idea here. But the point of interest here is actually, let me delete this um, green part so that you can see this, is to find out what is the uh, voltage of the capacitor here between these two sub-circuits. So you have um, VC T, which is uh, default 0, G 0 minus, um, equal to something that you want to find out so what is it um, I'm going to uh, need another page here to say so um, as you can see here if you want to um, find out what is the voltage across this resistor will be basically the uh, voltage divider right 16 ohm with um, uh, one third of it 16 ohm because uh, that's what we have it for the circuit so which means that I can um, wait a second where is my empty space this is not my empty space here we go um, so the two circuit here this part and this part um, this part of the circuit, I can actually find out the voltage uh, divider across this resistor, which gives me 12 uh, volt multiplied by uh, 12 kilo um, as a nominator value, and then the sum of these two resistors, right? 12k plus uh, 4k, and then minus the, the other circuit. So this would be. Um, because this looks like again uh, an arrow resistor so this will be um, 12 uh, 3k over um, 3 plus 6 3k plus 6k so this will give me uh, what value is that um, 12 volt and then minus this will give me 
four volt. So eventually the VC uh, zero before the switch is closed, what I will get will be twelve minus four. That will be equal to eight four. So the next step you need to see is what will the schematic of the circuit would look like after T is greater than zero, which means that after the switch is uh, open. So I'm going to need another figure here, which I will just copy it from the picture I draw earlier. Copy and paste right here. So this is after switch is um, open. So I'm going to use that after switch is open. And then um, so basically um, this part of the world is actually not part of the circuit anymore because the other terminal has to be connected with something otherwise the it act like open circuit the current won't flow through this uh, elements. So the next step I will do is I own, own, uh, probably need another figure here so I'm going to need one new page and uh, what I will do now is to uh, see what uh, state I will change it so I'm going to update this uh, new uh, diagram with some information that I need to find more. So this is a new page um, so you know that for capacitor 10 uh, microfarad will be what um, so 1 over s times c is equal to 1 over uh, s times 100 to the 10 power or minus 6 um, so if my math is right it will be uh, if I move this up here it will be 10 k over s so this value will be replaced with the frequency domain as um, 10 k over s. See, we are dealing with everything in the frequency domain. Um, so, from the circuit perspective, what you can do is to simplify this circuit as much as possible. But I'm going to do this in a uh, systematic way so that you can trace what I'm doing so I'm going to need the previous picture and copy and paste here um, as you can see the entire part of this is irrelevant because we don't like, we don't need them anymore right so what about uh, this part of the circuit this is a tavern so you can actually simplify them by uh, converting this into Norton so what I would do I'm going to do this systematically so that I can simplify the schematic which will be um, so this I'm going to copy this and then the next diagram will be I'm going to delete this uh, maybe unplug it now for now and uh, you use the red color to represent the new update so this will be the Norton of 4k Um, and then with a um, current source um, which will be the 16 which is coming from this voltage source divided by uh, 4k that will give me uh, 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 so this is actually writing in the form of uh, frequency domain we can write as 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by the s value so and you know that uh, so I'm gonna need to delete this because that's what I will show you how you convert from tavern to non equivalent circuit so we need to convert this uh, combine this two parallel circuit into one um, so what I will do is to um, copy and paste here uh, the new resistor here with um, so using the blue color 12k times 4k divided by 12k plus 4k will be uh, 3k ohm so 
I just delete them now and this will be even more simplified with only a single resistor here as 3k ohm um, and then of course this is the same as what we had before so let's just bring this down here so this will give you a lot of intuition in terms of uh, after t this is uh, open right and how it's changed from one to the other state and uh, the only thing is this part is require additional thing because we have initial value of the capac uh, the capacitor remember uh, from the last lecture we say that this will have to represent some sort of initial value so I'm going to need to uh, modify this by adding a new uh, element as the voltage source here with uh, new colors so that will be the voltage source <coughs> and this will be S uh, 8 over S and why is that 8 is actually coming from the 8 volt we initially f uh, found from this so this is a 8 volt by finding when T was before the time uh, is equal to 0 that's uh, how when uh, this is the voltage across this two uh, capacitor so this is the the topology information so you can see that based on the example I, I gave it to you uh, I show you uh, there's a, a difference between the two because uh, the one that I have is th there's no switch changing from one state to the other and there is of course there is no uh, existing voltage or current on the capacitor or either on the capacitor or inductor so uh, that makes a lot different in terms of how you're going to solve a circuit problem is with or without the initial condition of the circuit so once you have this, this is eventually the circuit that you are going to solve. Um, and don't forget about what we intend to do here is to find out this guy. The I output. Um, so, but I need to write this again in the form of the frequency. So that means capital output with the S inside the bracket. You know, uh, we we can always simplify circuit as simple as possible. So when you see this, uh, originally we do the tavernant and conversion and all that equivalent of the circuit, and now we have a single um, resistor. In this case, we can actually convert it back to the tavernant so that we have a single loop of circuit. So um, this is bad for converting uh, tavernant to uh, not and vice versa. I'm gonna need that diagram again for the new page. Um, to show you what's the new uh, simplify um, schematic next so this will be um, so what I'm gonna need to change this uh, is to uh, move this up first and the resistor will be in in series now so I'm gonna use the green color to indicate the final state of the circuit which we will solve this will be 3 kilo ohm and then with a voltage source that's it so 3 ohms how do you find out uh, this uh, source so basically 4 times 3 right that will give you 12 over s why is it 12 because this is 10 to the power 3 this is 10 to the power minus 3 that got cancer and then you got uh, 12 over s value so 12 over s 3k with the value of the capacitor voltage and the initial value and the resistor and then what you want to find out the uh, output uh, current so this is really no brainer um, you have to find out um, what would be the current here and the current around this loop is actually what we're looking for which is the uh, I out over S so how are you going to write this uh, loop equation so I can just simply write this here as minus 12 over s um, plus 3k from this and then another 3k here so another 3k and then plus uh, 10k over s right this is all uh, ILC elements so and then multiply by the I out S 
and then enter getting out is uh, minus enter is plus so you have plus 8 over s that's it that will be equal to 0 so this is uh, basically the KCL that we learned before so if you know how to use the calculator you can actually use the uh, solve to write in the form of I O S equal to something right so I just key in all this variable rep represent s as x and uh, i as y for my calculator I use a uh, soft with respect to y and this is why I got uh, the function I have is two third uh, two third um, and then divided by um, one over s plus um, fifth over five over three. I think that's what I have from the calculator by simplifying that. And of course, that there is a uh, mini here, so which means that this is a uh, 10 to the power of minus 3 so at this state you probably already know how you're gonna do it so I can actually write this as uh, 3 0 0.67 times 1 over s plus um, 1.67 uh, mini because that's how uh, it represents milliamps and to do the inverse Laplace transform of um, I O S for this function will be equal to uh, 0 0.67 times e to the power of minus 1.67 times t um, u t of course and uh, don't forget about the mini m so you usually will have to write next to the unit so that's the end uh, solution for this uh, question so I I think that I can do a better job to organize this node down here uh, by moving up, shrink this a little bit. And this is the um, N is up, so this is kind of small. I'm just going to use um, this. This is a solution. Um, for the question, so it's a, a little bit, uh, um, it's a little bit uh, long uh, for this question, but you know that's the difference between uh, without initial condition and weak initial condition. And the 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 schematic weak initial condition is when you have switch because the the battery state will be charged or discharged, and you probably will know what what already uh, there by having. Uh, solving the circuit before the time and after the time just like what I have shown before so I hope you will be able to solve with this example I hope you will be able to solve uh, question 14.36